And our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Shardell. Good evening. Tonight I have a gratitude from a young uh, grade school child to share with you. Quote, one day I didn't invite a friend to my birthday party and she was hurt. She ignored me for a month or so. I did invite her because she was bossy and mean. This went on since second grade. We prayed about this in Sunday school. Then she came to her senses this year and she apologized to three people who had liked her. They accepted her apology and started to talk again. And we talked it out. And we are friends again. End quote. Thank you. Elizabeth from New Hampshire, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you. And thank you for those really beautiful readings tonight. I would like to express my sincere and utter gratitude for all that I've learned at the Plainfield Church. Their wonderful website is chock full of Christian science literature from A to Z. The beautiful Wednesday night meetings with so many inspired testimonies of growth and healing through Christian science. All of the offerings, so informative. Last Sunday's round table in particular could have been considered the best treatment ever given. It was Christian science in a nutshell. Every mm -hmm. box was checked and every button was pushed. It's practically all that one could ever need to know how to pray for the world, for his neighbor, for himself and his family, for his household, or his workplace. So many wonderful ideas contained therein. These beautiful healing truths committed to memory and pondered in thought every morning and all throughout the day will keep us on the right path and certainly bless everyone in our path. Every day and in every hour, we thank the omnipresent God for giving us the way showers Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy, discoverer and founder of Christian Science, and also to the Plainfield Church for showing us the way that we would walk. Thank you so much, and good night. Thank you. Tom from Iowa, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the readings, Lenny. They were very good. I am most grateful for this church and for practitioner support. God is truly good and loving. Thanks to Florence for the timely morning prayer on Sunday at the roundtable. I also enjoyed Faith Solo, His Eyes on a Sparrow, which is one of my favorite songs sung in this church. I'm grateful for Christ Jesus, the way shower, Mary Baker Eddy, and for all that she's given to mankind and for this church and its members. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Someone's calling in from area code 541-551. Can you please announce who you are and go ahead with your testimony? Hi, it's Lonnie, and I want to thank you all for offering all your services. When I received your beautiful message on body attributed to Mary Baker Eddy a couple days ago, it was exactly what I needed at that moment, and it healed me, and I am still rejoicing and wanting to share. I appreciate all that you do. I'm so grateful for Mrs. Eddie, for Christ Jesus, and for our, our, our wonderful Father Creator. Thank you. Mishaila from Canada, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you, Lenny, for the readings. They were a, a welcome encouragement to shine. I am, very I am a very responsible person, and I want to fulfill all my duties promptly. Often, that results in me losing my peace because others don't feel equally responsible 
to do their part. I often get tempted to get annoyed because I think I need to do it all alone. In the lesson of soul a few weeks back was this verse from Psalm 23, quote, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake, end quote. This birth was also discussed during the round table on Sunday that week, and it inspired me to ask myself, for whose name's sake do I do the work that I do? The honest answer that came is, I do it for my name's sake. It gives me a good feeling to receive a pat on the back and acknowledgement. It wasn't easy to admit this is not the right motive. Because of that, I made a promise to myself that I will start doing everything for God's name's sake. That day, I had to receive a large shipment consisting of heavy boxes. This time, I didn't whine, why is no one here to help me? But I said, I go every step with God. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. When I lifted a box, I said, God is my strength, and I will walk with him. I had so much fun putting away the boxes, I found the perfect space where to store them, and all was done in minimal time. It might seem a small thing, but for me, it was another awakening moment to experience that God restores my soul, my peace. He leadeth me in the right path of thinking. To even do the unpacking of a shipment for his name's sake. I am far from being in his peace always, but thanks to this church's activities and regular practitioner guidance and prayer, I am making steps toward the restoration of peace in my life. <clears throat> my thanks goes to Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy for giving us Christian science and to all of you for building this exceptional community in this church. Thank you. Luba from Ohio, go ahead. Good evening. The other day I experienced dizziness and spinning as I was sitting at the kitchen table. I closed my eyes and prayed that this was a lie about my God-given perfection. After a few minutes, I opened my eyes, and the spinning had stopped, and I was so grateful. I spoke to my practitioner about this, and also mentioned that my sister and mother both dealt with this. She immediately stated, in science, our true family is our father, mother, God, and there is no family history. I'm so grateful for this truth and all else that Christian science provides concerning everything in our lives. I'm also grateful to this church for all that it provides, and I'm most grateful to my ever-present and loving practitioner, and I'm so grateful to be here this evening. Thank you. Linda. Thank you so much for the readings tonight. I'd like to express my gratitude to God for leading me to the Plainfield Christian Science Independent Church and for all the practical teaching I have gained through, the le through lessons, through what's taught here and my practitioner here at Plainfield. And all the support that is showing me how to live this science and how to maintain a connection with God. 
I was talking with my practitioner the other day about the necessity of accuracy, exactness, order in all that we do. This has been, requires cultivating discipline, care, watchfulness, just to name a few qualities. And this, uh, as, we, uh, as we go about our day. And it's only possible as you maintain a relationship with God so that you can hear him. That day, after I hung up and did my work for the day, some uh, several challenges were met in the work I was doing and only can be explained through divine help. Ideas were unfolded new, uh, and uh, items found and uh, just a new sense of organization and order and peace that uh, I experienced and it was just uh, really amazing. I can't even use words to explain, but it gave me a window into how amazing God's universe is when we allow him to take over, get ourselves out of the way. Living Christian science as taught here has opened my heart and world to living a life of, through inspiration. I'm so grateful to God for giving us Christ Jesus Mary Baker Eddy in the Plainfield Church and for all their teachings and example. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. I'm very grateful tonight for all I have learned about Christian science here in Plainfield and for how we are taught to apply and live this science in our lives. I have learned here that God is speaking to us constantly. And with these teachings, I've come to rely on God to let me know all I need to do each day. And sure enough, by adhering to the science to the best of my understanding, I've heard him speaking and done accordingly. I have also learned here that by being obedient to God, to the best of my understanding again, God will protect me and keep me healthy. And I have found this to be very true. Because Christian science is real and practical, because it actually works, I'm grateful to have found that every promise of God is fulfilled here. Nothing else on earth was able to heal me. And that is because the good and positive results are here, so long as my motives have been pure and my thought uplifted. I'm so grateful for this church and for regular practitioner support for every blessing and every healing these years. Thank you. And now we have a testimony from Michelle in Australia. I would like to give my heartfelt thanks to God and my wonderful Plainfield practitioner who helped so much with an experience my family and I went through a couple of months ago. My brother and I went home to Kenya to celebrate a belated Christmas with my parents. We had an amazing time going on safari for several days. We reunited beautifully as a family after about five years of not being able to all be together. The park was really abundant with wildlife, especially elephants, after all the rain. A day after we returned home, we were listening to the Plainfield Wednesday service, as my mum always does on a Saturday evening. The testimonies were wonderful and very inspiring. One especially was about the healing of grief after a testifier's husband had passed on. After the meeting, my brother called us as he had found our beloved dad had passed away in his study. I immediately called my Plainfield practitioner to work for the situation. We were heartbroken and in shock as this was totally unexpected. She was so calm and loving and prayed for and with us on the way to the hospital and for several weeks afterwards as we updated her every step of the way. It had happened in such a peaceful way for him with no pain. God had governed every step of the way, way leading up to that day and then every detail of the weeks and months afterwards. I don't have time to discuss everything that happened which proves God's closeness, but I will mention just a couple of things. We decided to have Hymn 58 at a celebration of life as that was the hymn my parents had had at their wedding and then my husband and I at our wedding. A Saturday following his passing, 
we decided to read the hymn before we turned on the Wednesday service. As soon as we read it and we turned on the service, it began with hymn 58. We all looked at each other and smiled. As I read somewhere, there are no coincidences, just divine appointments. It felt like the service had been written for us and God knew what we needed. Another interesting development that happened during this time while working with my practitioner was with my oldest son, Joe. My dad had wanted Joe to study engineering as he was an engineer himself and he thought it would fit well with the skills that Joe has. He had been accepted to study musical theatre, which he always loved at school. But when he started the course, it didn't feel he was in the right place. My husband contacted someone who had said a month earlier that he could give Joe an apprenticeship if he wanted one. That opportunity didn't work out, but it led to another apprenticeship to work and study a certificate three in engineering. God had a plan. I know there is one mind, so I'm quite sure my dad knows and is smiling joyously, seeing his grandson doing what he always loved to do. This is from my Plainfield practitioner, which really brought us comfort. Quote, your good and loving father is with his heavenly father, as really we all are, even at this very moment. You can never be separated from all the good he expressed, for your father was and still is an expression of the goodness of God. As we spoke about yesterday, even his passing was a demonstration. He walked out, which is so wonderful. That is what Herbert Eustace did and Gilbert Carpenter too. I never knew your dad personally, but felt like I knew him. So many wonderful things spoken about him. His sweet nature and good humour glowed even on the watches. So he lives on in your heart and in that way he will remain ever close to you and to all who love him. Close quote. Thank you and love to you all. And now we have a testimony from Izzy in England. I would mention something that just happened just this afternoon. After an appointment, I went to go check on one of our jobs that is ongoing, a property refurbishment. It's right in the centre of town and parking is tricky. I drove past the house and I circled the area a couple of times and it was absolutely packed. So I circled round again, I reversed into the street where the property is and I just sat there for a minute. Although it was looking completely hopeless. I turned to the thought of the one divine mind controlling all and holding all at the point of perfection. And then I actually pulled the thought back because it didn't look like it was going to work and I didn't want it not, I didn't want it to not work and then to be disappointed. And I think it looked so hopeless that I think I thought there was no chance that it could work. And then suddenly without any warning, a car that was parked in the furthest end space, just pulled out and drove away. There'd been no warning. The driver must have been sitting in the car already. And this was the easiest space for me just to pull forward and reverse into. As I parked up and walked into the property, I just had this little smile and I was just filled with gratitude for this demonstration. Even when it seemed completely hopeless and impossible. Truly, nothing is impossible to God. And I was so grateful to have this proved once again and to be shown that there is no situation that God cannot help with. Thank you for everything that I'm learning here at the Plainfield Church and much love to all. And now we have a testimony from Kara in New Mexico. This is a testimony inspired by a recent walk with my dog. When I moved to a small town on the first day of the so-called pandemic, my dog and I took long walks in quiet neighborhoods, along streams, in parks, so little noise and so much nature, it was wonderful for me. My dog, however, rarely wanted to go on these peaceful, quiet walks. Then one day I took her to Main Street. It was as if she had walked into dog heaven, pea mail on every corner to leave and receive, which meant sheer delight for her and a lot of stopping and pulling and being jerked in the opposite direction from where I thought we were going for me. But she loves it, so we try to go to Main Street a few times a week. A few weeks ago, I underwent a physical and mental challenge during which I continually listened for the blessing and the lesson. 
I didn't have quite enough pep in my step to take her to Main Street, so when I finally did, her utter joy at pulling me from one P-mail message to the next brought a huge aha. Why does my dog love pee and dirty streets instead of nature and clear streams? The same reason I listen to Mortal Minds Lies and forget I live in the clear stream of divine love. During this challenge, I witnessed how easy it is to let the daily practice of Christian science become lax. Even though I had not been enjoying much of anything for months, even though everything felt flat and uninspired, whenever the thought came, how about turning to God? What about prayer? It was amazing how easily, I'll do it later, came. At night, the thought would arise, do something mindless. Three hours later, I went to bed even more disconnected than at the start of the day. Why couldn't I shift out of this horrible loop? For the same reason my dog drags me from trash can to fire hydrant to filthy wall. For the longest time, a line in science and health confused me. Mortal mind would be better if it knew how to be. I thought that meant I should help mortal mind be better. Then Gary said something that shifted everything. Mortal mind is a killer. Duh, that's why it's called mortal mind. Mortal mind's entire raison d'etre is to make us believe that we begin in painful birth and we end in unwanted death. So good luck trying to improve mortal mind. Mortal mind can't be better. It's in the business of mortality. That came through loud and clear with the help of my practitioner, who showed me that whatever seems real, this symptom going around the neighborhood, this touchy colleague at work, this enervating day staring at a screen, this global conflict, whatever, is just a different plot or character in the ongoing miniseries called Mortal Mind. As a kid, when miniseries first aired on TV, I saw the word in print, thought about the stories filled with characters going through one problem after another, and thought they were called miniseries because they were mini episodes of human misery. If we listen to or try to improve mortal mind, we are stuck in our own personal miniserie. That's why we have to fill our lives with truth, life, love, God, good. When we do, the fascination with mortal mind's p-mail evaporates because the only good, the only attraction comes from God. What looks like healing is truth waking us up to that God, good, love, and wake up we will because any lie, no matter the form, is only a lie and lies have no power. I feel so grateful for these lessons we're learning here at Plainfield, so grateful for a practitioner who knocks me upside the head with love when it's not God first and God only, and grateful for every testimony given about practice and prayer inspiring all of us to do the same. And now we have a testimony from Imogen in Australia. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for this beautiful testimony meeting tonight. I wanted to thank this sublime, independent Christian Science Church for standing with the pure teachings of Mary Baker Eddy and those of her precious students, the early workers, whose holy writings are preserved safely at this church. I truly thank God that these teachings are preserved. Before finding this independent church, I did not know enough about Mary Baker Eddy or the many explicit instructions she left for us to obey, and we did not have access to any early workers' writings other than one article by Bicknell Young entitled Day. I knew nothing of Martha Wilcox or Kimball or any of the wonderful early workers and I had never heard of the incredibly powerful and precious booklet, Watches, Prayers and Arguments, whose teachings have progressed me far beyond my previous understanding of Christian science just three years ago. Truly, in learning from our holy practitioners here, one can't help but know that the thought expressed is the pure, true and complete Christian science that Mary Baker Eddy discovered. The divine, holy, healing power of God in Christian science is far more powerful and far-reaching than I could have humanly conceived before coming to this church. I was speaking with my husband the other day about the daily duties that we have been shown at this precious church, 
and how utterly amazed I am that the more work I do for God, the happier I am, because I feel God's love always with me. Mary Baker Eddy revealed truly the wholesome, loving, divine, pure mind of God that knows no pain, no tear, no hurt of any kind, that knows only love and gratitude and peace. The teachings at this church have healed me of a deep sadness that I had felt for my whole life. I am very grateful for the teachings about forgiveness and repentance, the true washing away of sin deep within one's soul that is taught here. I am so grateful for this teaching and how to have a clear conscience by ruling out all sin, as Mary Baker Eddy wrote in our daily prayer, to rebuke sin and feel joyful to pray for others. So after I said all this to him, beaming at my own smile, my husband said, well, it seems to me that these daily duties have also become your daily joys. This was very beautiful to hear my husband witnessing the change he has seen in me over the last few years since coming here, that our daily duties have truly become my daily joys. The practice of pure Christian science taught at this church has opened the door to the most glorious, beautiful, love and joy and peace and safety of God, and this has all been far more than I could have ever hoped. I am very grateful to the pure practitioners at this church who stand for only what is good and right and true according to God, according to Christ Jesus and according to the divine revelation given by Mary Baker Eddy in Christian Science. I also have a rather belated thank you to dear Thomas from New York for the many wonderful Bible lessons that you have been preparing. I absolutely love them, and I take many notes. So thank you so much, Thomas, and thank you to all who contribute to the Bible studies and to all who contribute to the roundtables and all the meetings here. Thank you to all our beautiful workers and members around the world, and thank you to our holy practitioners at this independent church, and so much love to you all. Thank you. Tony or Lenny from Georgia, go ahead. Hey, thank you. This is Tony. I was I was going to give a testimony about something that happened at work today, and I started thinking, this really probably goes back a year and a half, maybe even more, um, to the kind of the, I guess, the, the genesis of this. Um, I have, I, I'm so grateful that God is really unfolding in each of us what we need to work on. You know, you, um, yes, it's important to have self-knowledge, but it's really God that unfolds in the right time, in the right way, the things that kind of need on on snarling. And about a year and a half ago, I started on this journey of really putting God as as a priority in my life. And... It showed up in a, a, a project that I took on, and I worked very diligently for, for many, many, many months. And um, it really kind of consumed my, my thought. It, was, it had something to do with, with uh, Mary Baker Eddy. It took many months. And from that, putting the priority of God and, and science really ahead of, of other priorities, I began to um, find myself relying more and more on, on God for, for all things in my life. It just started happening just kind of gradually. And recently I've started another project. And that is also now a, a huge priority in my life that it, I just, I have to get these certain things done. And um, through this, these projects, this 
um, I have taken on a, a, a new position at work. I was approached uh, and put into a, a bigger a bigger role. And one of the requirements of this role, uh, I'm I'm now in marketing, a job I've never done before. I was put in in charge of you know creating leads you know for this uh, for this company that I work for. And this idea had come to me to start a uh, a YouTube channel for my work. And I won't go through all the details, but I will say it is incredibly difficult <laughs> to go from having nothing to creating a YouTube channel, from having to understand and decipher all the technology and the cameras and the equipment, the recording softwares, uh, microphones and mixers. I mean, there's an awful lot to do. And I have been led the entire way of how to do this. But the most challenging part was the actual attraction of potential customers to come and speak to me on this channel. And today I had the best uh, YouTube channel interview with one of these potential guests. It was literally the, the culmination of probably four months of work with me trying to get this set up. And at the end of the uh, at the end of the interview, when I had kind of you know turned off the the YouTube, and we were just kind of chatting, you know, he complimented several of the ideas and things. And when well, I finished the, you know, I hung up with him and we finished and it occurred to me that everything, every idea, all the inspiration has all come from God. But what opened the way for that was the steadfast, you know, dedication to, uh, to God, to Mary Baker Eddy and to Christian science first, because you feel like kind of a hypocrite when you're simply asking God to help you solve your problems all the time, because we have lots of challenges all the time. And this natural growth in me has come um, as a part of me returning to Plainfield. And that was and just a kind of a what God unfolded. And I just, I hope this has made sense, <laughs> but it just, it just occurred to me that thou shalt have no other gods before me could be translated into thou shalt have no other priorities before me. And I think I've just kind of proved that out. And I'm deeply grateful to have been led back here to have the opportunities to prove this to myself and hopefully to others, to the practitioner that I work with here. And, um, yeah, deeply grateful. And, Thank you for those readings tonight on letting your light shine. Thank you. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Lenny, for the beautiful reminder to let our light shine. I have learned through the Christian science that if I let my little light shine, shine bright through right God thinking, as I go about my day, I know any darkness would not dare come close. I am grateful. I have a testimony from California. She says that a couple of weeks ago, I received a paper from my landlord asking to pay in full past rent on COVID relief. It was, a, it was to help individuals who had difficulty paying rent at that time. I was counting on my share of a sale of a small property my family owned to pay the amount back. When the day came, there was no money because the buyers just dropped the deal. I was so disappointed and a great panic set in. I did not know how I was going to pay it back and it was a big amount. I called a plain field practitioner and she immediately assured me not to worry and to put my dependence on God alone. He said God was in complete control and that 
God knows our need and will supply it. It took a lot of discipline and I had to put all my trust in God. She shared with me to pray with from Science and Health, page 494. Divine love always has met and always will meet every human need. And it goes on, it says, it is not well to imagine. Jesus demonstrated the divine power to heal only for a select number or for a limited period of time, since to all mankind and in every hour, divine love supplies all good. And also the 23rd Psalm saying that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I prayed with these continually during the day and when I woke up in the middle of the night. I spoke with my practitioner every day, and she advised me to trust that God will supply my need and recommended that I write the property management and ask for payment options. She also said not to forget to pay my tithe, no matter how small. I sent an email to the company asking to allow me to pay monthly. In about three days, to my surprise, they emailed and gave me a whole year to pay the amount back. I was so relieved and praised and thanked God for all he has done and to this church for all that I'm learning. I am forever grateful for the tools we need to become aware of our closeness to God and also that no situation can be too big that God could not resolve. I am grateful for my practitioner and I am grateful for Plainfield Independent always. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Mary. Good evening, everyone. I have a few short things to read tonight. Uh, The first from Vermont. Greetings. The Plainfield Church is a beacon of light to all and an inestimable blessing to us. And closed once again is our monthly contribution in support of the beautiful activities going on all the time to get out the message of Mary Baker Eddy's Pure Christian Science to a hungering and thirsting world. Sent with love. And then Virginia, dear fellow members, encloses my monthly contribution to support the vital work of this independent Christian Science Church. What a blessing it is, not only to its members, but to all it reaches through its amazing website, through services, teachings, printed and audio articles, an awesome Sunday school outreach and so many practical blessings in so many languages, addressing all human need. With grateful thanks for the great church, for the great love of this church. And then uh, someone wrote on the bulletin board, if anyone was interested, at a round table recently, it was mentioned the Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary and also the Life of Christ by Frederick Farrar, and uh, sh- she writes that they are available to download from the Internet Archive. And the Internet Archive is a nonprofit library of millions of free books, movies, software, music, websites, and more. And then she gives you the address to the archive. And then this is a testimony from Pennsylvania. Recently, my husband was diagnosed with COVID. Two days later, I had the same symptoms, though I did not have a diagnosis. We stayed quarantined in our apartment following facility guidelines. There were a couple of challenging days with the physical symptoms and a medical warning it may get worse or last for a couple of weeks. At one point, there was concern that the quarantine would not be lifted. Each challenge was met and overcome with prayer. This was a time of spiritual growth accompanied by gradual and steady improvement in our physical health. It was great fun to be free Saturday to do laundry again, which meant many trips down a long haul that we felt very much up to. I attribute the healing results to the fine work of a Plainfield Church member 
and support of the Plainfield Church and our wonderful Father, Mother, God, the source of all good. Thank you very much tonight for the readings about letting our light shine. I think it's something to be mindful of as we go about our day. Are we shining? Are we radiating God's love? As that article, Radiation Versus Absorption, brings out, we need to be radiating God's love and not absorbing uh, the, the thoughts of mortal mind. Um, tonight it was read, Mary Baker Eddy, Consistency is seen in example more than in precept. Inconsistency is shown by words without deeds, which are like clouds without rain. If our words fail to express our deeds, God will redeem that weakness, and out of the mouth of babes, he will perfect praise. I love that fact that um, God will redeem that weakness if it's something we struggle with. Um, it also reminded me something that Mrs. Evans would tell us that after going through class, uh, she one thing that kept coming to her was that she needed consistency. It was like a big light, she would say. And I think it's something we all can strive to do better with consistency, to watch our thoughts all the time. Are they thoughts from a loving God or not? And if they're not, reject them. Don't entertain those thoughts. So consistency is so important, and I appreciated that being read tonight, as well as all the other beautiful things that were read. And to hear the beautiful testimonies and music, I'm always so grateful to have this time with you all on a Wednesday evening. And I wish you all a good night. Thank you.